Welcome to Electron Align and in, in this example we're going to show you that you can do a double integral in two ways. You can first integra integrate over the x variable and then the y variable or you can first do the y variable and then the x variable. So we're going to do this problem both ways. Also we need to understand the convention in the order of the integral signs. Here it doesn't seem clear as to which limits these are. Does this belong to the x and not to the y or vice versa? And the, the convention typically is that whichever differential you put, you put first, that has to be associated with the integral sign right here. So the dx um, is associated with the second integral sign, so these are x limits and that makes those y limits. Sometimes to prevent confusion, we could write it like this. We could say, well, this is equal to the integral with the y limits from y equals 1 to y equals 3, and then the second integral sign from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And then you write down 1 minus 4xy dx dy. So that way it leaves no doubt whatsoever. Most textbooks don't do that. They just simply use the convention and they say that the first differential is associated with the last integral sign, the second differential with the first integral sign, and so forth. And then if there's three integral signs, they use the same convention. We also should be able to reverse the order of integration. We should be able to say that this is equal to the integral sign from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And then the second integral sign from y equals 1 to y equals 3. And then 1 minus 4xy dy dx. And we should be able to get the same answer. Now, not always is that a wise thing to do. For example, in some cases, one method will be more e will easier to integrate than the other method, so there's a preferred way to go about it. But in this particular case, I don't think it really matters, so I'll go ahead and show the example both ways. So what we're going to do here is first integrate uh, using the dx as a differential, so we're going to integrate over the x variable. And notice that when you integrate the first integral, Anything that is not an x is just like a constant. For example, the y here will simply be a constant when we integrate over dx. So when we go ahead and do that, this is equal to the first integral from 1 to 3. Remember, these are the y limits. And then when we integrate this, this over the x variable, this becomes x plus 4. Here this becomes x squared over 2 times y. Remember, the y acts just like a constant, the number 4, and so we don't have to integrate that. And so now we have to plug in the limits. The limits are from 0 to 1. And then we still have to write a dy because whatever this becomes, we then integrate it again over the y, in, uh, y variable. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to 3 of, so when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 plus, when we plug in the upper limit here, 1 squared is simply 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so this becomes plus 2y. And then we plug in the lower limit. Whenever we plug in a 0 here, that gets 0. Plug in a 0 there, that becomes 0 as well. So 0 plus 0. We don't have to write it, but just for clarity, I'm going to include that. And then the whole thing is then integrated over the variable dy. OK, again, when I plug in the upper limit here, this 1 becomes a 1. And when I plug in a 1 over here, x squared, 1 squared is just simply 1. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we still have the y variable right there. So that's where that came from. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to 3 of 1 plus 2y dy. And now we go ahead and integrate it again. And that one too. Ha. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Ha. Thank you. All right. So now we can integrate this again. So this will be equal to integrate 1 dy. That becomes y plus 2 integrate y. That would be y squared over 2. Of course, the 2's cancel out. And then the limits are from 1 to 3. When we plug in the upper limit, we'll get 3 plus 3 squared. And then we subtract from that when we plug in the lower limit, which is 1 plus 1 squared, like that. So this is equal to 9 plus 3, which is 12, minus 1 plus 1, which is 2. And so finally, the answer here is 10. Okay, so that would be the answer to this integral. So now let's go ahead and integrate it again, but now we're going to reverse the order of operation. We're going to integrate over the y variable first and then integrate over the x variable, and we should get the exact same answer if we don't make any mistakes, so let's find out. So first we're going to integrate this using the y as a variable, so this becomes the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1, and when we integrate this, this becomes y 
plus 4xy squared over 2, and the limits are from 1 to 3. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit. This becomes a 1, this becomes a 2, that cancels out. So now let's go ahead and plug in the upper limit and then plug in the lower limit. So this is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Plug in the upper limit, we get 3 plus 2x times 3 squared minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 1 plus 2x times y Oh, and the y, I'm plugging the limit here. Lower limit is 1, so times 1, quantity squared, and the whole thing, put the bracket there, times dx. All right, so now we have integrated over the y variable first, plug in the y limits, and let's simplify that. So this is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And here we have 3 plus this is 9 times 2 plus 18x minus, here we get 1 plus 2x. And the whole thing times dx. All right, before we integrate, we can simplify this a little bit more. So this is equal to the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And you may wonder, why do I keep writing the x and as with the limits here, just to keep it uh, easier to understand what we're doing with variable we're using to integrate. So we have 3 minus 1, which is 2, and we have 18 minus 2x, which is plus 16x, and we're going to integrate that with the x variable right there. All right, now we can go ahead and do the second integral. So this is equal to 2x plus 16x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 1. Simplifying this a little bit, that becomes a 1, that becomes an 8. So this is equal to, when I plug in the upper limit, 2 times 1 plus 8 times 1 squared minus, when I plug in the lower limit, but then we simply get 0 plus 0, just for clarity. And then you can see that this is 2 times 1 plus 8 times 1, or 10. And sure enough, we get the exact same answer regardless of which way we integrate it, which variable we integrate first. And that's usually the case. Uh, you should be able to get the same answer regardless of which order you integrated it. What you will find in, in some examples that we'll show you in the next several videos, some cases it just makes it easier to do one first and then the other. You can try it both ways and you'll find that one way makes it very difficult to integrate so you don't want to do that. You always try to find the path of least resistance so to speak. So you kind of look at it and say I think it'll be easier when I use the x variable first and then the y or sometimes the y variable first and then the x. In some cases, it makes no difference at all. Like here, you can do it either way, and you should get the same answer. Matter of fact, if this was on a test, you had some extra time, you may want to do it both ways. Make sure you get the same answer to make sure you did it correctly.